All right, 4.2, coterminal and related angles. What I did is I took this from the textbook and we're just gonna go through the different concepts here so that you can um, understand what I'm trying to point out here. First of all, the primary trigonometric ratios for the angle theta in standard position has a point xy on its terminal arm which can be calculated as sine theta equals y over r, cos theta equals x over r, and tan theta equals y over x, where r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. Don't forget that the value of r is always positive because we're talking about the length of a radius. That's what r represents. So if you look on this particular circle right here, you'll see on the circle that there is a radius r, that's your r, and the point on the circle has the coordinates x, y, where x represents the horizontal and y represents the vertical. Now, the equation is another way that you can write it is in the form of the Pythagorean theorem, which is x r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Now let's focus on a couple of other things. For example, any point on that circle has the coordinates x and y. From 0, 0 to that point, that's known as the radius. So sine theta equaling y over r, y is the opposite, r is the hypotenuse. Now, when we remember when we think about, just let me go back a second, when we think about the quadrants, now remember how we number them, this is quadrant 1, this is quadrant 2, this is quadrant 3, and finally this is quadrant 4. Now, in these different quadrants, these points that are in these different quadrants have either positive or negative x or y values. And you have to understand how to calculate or how to determine the sine ratios, cosine ratios, and tan ratios. And the first statement here that starts says, for any given sine ratio, two distinct angles between 0 and 360 have this sine ratio, meaning that in, in the two there are two quadrants in which sine is positive, and two quadrants in which sine is negative. Let's just talk about the sine that's positive. If we're looking at the quadrants, sine is positive when y is positive and r is positive. That's the only way sine could be positive. So where is y positive and r positive? Well, r is always positive, so we're specifically looking at the y values. Where is the y, are the y values positive? first one is in the first quadrant, y is positive there. The second one is in the second quadrant, y is also positive there. In the other two quadrants, y is negative, therefore sine cannot be positive. Next, let's look at cos theta. What about cos theta? What's happening with cos theta? Cos theta is x over r. Where is x positive? x is positive in the first and fourth quadrant. x is positive in both quadrants and r is all remains positive all the time. The trickiest one is the tan theta. Tan theta will be positive when x and y are positive or when x and y are negative because a negative divided by a negative is positive. So tan theta equals y over x can only be positive in the first and the third quadrant. So there we go, folks. What we've now determined is actually the cast rule. Cosine is positive in the fourth quadrant. Tan is positive in the third quadrant. 
sine is positive in the second quadrant, and in the first quadrant, all three are positive. And what you have here, folks, is something called the cast rule. Starting with A is in quadrant one. So again, A in quadrant one, and then S in quadrant two, T in quadrant three, and C in quadrant four. What we have here, folks, is the cast rule. All right, now, looking at all the other statements, those are true for cosine and tangent. Now, pairs of related angles can be found using the coordinates of the endpoints of their terminal arms. Use a reference angle in the first quadrant. Coterminal angles are angles with the same terminal arm. They can be positive or negative. So, as a reference angle, remember folks, what's a reference angle? It is an angle from the terminal arm to the closest x-axis. An angle in standard position is measured from the positive x-axis in a counterclockwise direction to the terminal arm. That gives you a positive angle of standard position. All right, let's go on and continue this. Example 1. Determine the value of a. Sine a is equal to negative 1 over root 2, where a is between 0 and 360 degrees. Thinking about sine a, so a is any angle between 0 and 360. Where is sine negative? So we're looking at sine a, and you see that the value of the ratio is negative. That means we need to know where sine is negative. So by drawing a quick Cartesian plane and x and y coordinate system, we know that sine is negative in the third quadrant and in the fourth quadrant because that's where the y values are negative and don't forget that the r is always positive. So we need where the y values are negative in order to have sine a equal a negative ratio. That means the opposite sides are, and that's the cast rule again, folks. The cast rule is just reminding you that sine is positive in the first and second quadrant. So the, obviously the third and fourth sine is negative. That's why we drew our triangles in the third and fourth quadrant. So writing out, why are we writing out 45 degrees? Remember that negative 1 over root 2 is a, special, is, is a special ratio. 1 over root 2 would mean, negative 1 over root 2 means that there must be a 45 degree angle. The reference angle must be 45 degrees such that the opposite side is negative 1 and the hypotenuse is root 2. The same would go on the other side. And we have that. So we have negative 1 over root 2 would be the sine of 45 in this quadrant. Now we need to know the angle from standard position. So if I measure it from the positive x-axis and I go in a counterclockwise direction, I should get to the first terminal arm. That angle is going to be 180 plus the 45. So we get 225 degrees. All right, now, just a reminder of all the special angle triangles. I find that students forget them, so we write them over and over again. The special triangle is 45, 45, where there it's a isosceles triangle, and it's 1, 1, and root 2. The other special triangle is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, and a 30, 60, 90 Opposite the 30, being the smallest side, is 1. Opposite the hypotenuse, sorry, the hypotenuse opposite the right angle is 2. So the other one is root 3. So we need this particular triangle right now. This is the one we're working with. We found that the first angle is 225 degrees. We need to find the next angle, which going all the way around, almost all the way fully around, so that's going to be 360 minus 45, which gives us 
315 degrees. So those are your two values of A and its exact values, so a calculator is not going to help you here, folks. All right. Next, cosine of A is equal to negative root 3 over 2. Looking at this one, I suggest you draw out a special triangle and figure this out. Cosine is negative in the second, sorry, let's try the triangle, there it is. So what is cosine A is adjacent, adjacent to A is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2, so the must be A must be 30 degrees. 30 degrees in which quadrant? Well, that would be where cosine is negative. Cosine is negative in the second and third quadrants. So that you get a value of 30 degrees in each corner. And we find out that the answer to that is going to be 150 degrees. And for the orange one, it will be 210 degrees. Alright folks, that's the end of this video. We'll go on to video number two.